Hi everybody, this is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. I recently released a video on how to set up a basic hydroponic system for non-circulating hydroponics or the crack key method. And in no time at all, a question came up about nutrient solutions and how to deal with that with your plants. So I thought that warranted another video. So here we go on nutrient solutions for hydroponics. First thing you need to do is figure out what kind of nutrient solution to use. That's determined by the type of plants that you're going to grow. Are you growing leafy greens or are you growing flowering plants like a tomato or a cucumber, something like that, or flowers per se. And the different companies will release different types of nutrient solutions depending upon what you grow. Some of them can be applicable either way. Now, I'm not promoting any one brand over another. I have no affiliations with any of them. I will show you what I use, which is General Hydroponics MaxiGrow. And this is certainly not the only one out there, but it's just the first one that I tried and I was happy with the results and so therefore I can use this. And it is designed for both flowering plants and leafy greens. So I'm happy with this no matter which way I go. Okay. And uh, the directions on here say one to two teaspoons per gallon of uh, fresh water. I generally use just slightly under one teaspoon and I find that that's plenty for me. Less than one teaspoon, just barely for one gallon of filtered water, okay? So, first things first, you figure out what you're going to grow and then find a nutrient solution mix that works right for you. Do not use regular fertilizer that you might put outside in your garden when you're planting in the soil. The needs of hydroponically grown plants are different than those that are grown in the soil. So therefore, you need something that's designed specifically for hydroponic growing. The next thing you need for sure is something to adjust your pH with, as well as something to measure the pH with. Now, to measure the pH of your solution, oh, you can buy pH meters. I don't happen to have one here at the moment or you could use test strips, laboratory test strips, which I have here. You tear one off and put it in your solution and you compare the color with the chart that's on there and it'll give you an idea of what your pH is of your solution. Generally speaking, the ideal uh, starting pH of your solution should be between 5.5 and 6.5. But don't take that for granted. Just make sure for whatever you are growing that you know what your pH uh, should be for your solution. Okay, now they don't all mix up with that degree of pH. Okay, so you may need to adjust your pH. So that brings us to the next point. Adjusting pH. Okay, now uh, general hydroponics sells a kit, and again, I'm not promoting general hydroponics, this is just something I'm aware of, of a pH up and a pH down type of solution, so, and it comes with uh, a large pipette that you can use, and it also comes with a pH test indicator where you put a little bit of the solution in this vial and put about three drops or so of this in there and it'll turn a color and then you would compare that color with the different colors on the label and that'll tell you what your pH is of that solution. It really is important to have something to adjust the pH with because for instance the solution mix that I use always mixes up very acidic and I need to add the pH up to that to bring it up to 5.5 to 6.5 and I usually wind up adding just under 6 milliliters which again is marked on this pipette. 
Now, you might be able to use baking soda to bring the pH up and vinegar to bring the pH down. I have never done that. Some people may have tried that. Uh, they would work effectively in adjusting pH. I'm just not sure how well that would work in hydroponics for plants. So it's something to question on that. The next question will be when to put your plants in your bin. Well, assuming that you've started them in rock wool, you want to just check them to see if you have some little roots coming out of the bottom. This one actually does, hopefully you can see it there in front of my face. Okay, that one actually has a little root coming out of the bottom of the rock wool. This one is ready to be planted in a bin. Now I have a net pot and all I need to do is put the rock wool cube down into the net pot. I try not to put it completely down. I leave a little bit of space. That way that root has some room to go down, find a hole here in the bottom of the net pot and go down through it and down into the nutrient solution and other roots will grow along the way too. Now what you'll do is fill your bin to the point where the solution comes up above the bottom of that rock wool. Generally speaking about a half an inch up into the net pot would work just fine and you'll do that only when your roots start to come through the rock wool otherwise they may die they not, may not get enough liquid long enough uh, to spark the root growth so that's when you will put them in your net pot and then you basically just leave them alone now the next question might be do you re-add nutrients to that water do you change that water out what do you do well, the Kratke method, this is a method developed by Dr. B.A. Kratke, who's a professor at the University of Hawaii, who actually developed the non-circulating hydroponic system as a very, very simple way to grow fast-growing crops in a system that requires no electricity, no pumps, no extra stuff, except perhaps uh, your lighting, you might, if you're growing it indoors, you'll need lights. And there in Hawaii, they just have them outside, lots of sunlight. So what you'll do is just kind of monitor it. And the premise is one head of lettuce will grow with one gallon of water. And by the time that water is about out, that lettuce is ready to be harvested. So with that premise, Nothing needs to be done. You don't need to worry about adding more nutrient solution. You don't add more nutrients to what you've already added to the bin. You don't even really need to add more liquid to the bin if you plan on harvesting that lettuce within about a month or so, which is usually about how long it takes to grow a head of lettuce, somewhere in that vicinity. You obviously want to monitor the water level and make sure it doesn't run dry before you harvest that lettuce because if it does, it's going to dry up and not do well. So now if you decide that you do need to add some more nutrient solution to your bin, maybe you've got a crop that you want to prolong the life of or you've got a plant or two in there that is going to take longer to uh, grow and develop before you harvest it, then the water is going to last, then you can just simply add more nutrient solution to your bin. However, be sure that you do not add so much that you bring it up to the original level. If you look at the roots that have developed, you'll see some fresh roots that are short and have grown toward the top of that root mass. Those roots are there to help collect oxygen for the plant. So you don't want to cover those with more nutrient solutions. So you'll bring it up, but do not bring it up so high that it touches the bottom of the net pot. Leave it a good bit lower than that so you don't suffocate your plants. That's very important. Now one person did ask how often you change the water in your bin. This is a question that has a lot of different possibilities, a lot of opinions out there. 
and I cannot tell you exactly the right, if there is a right way to do this, okay? Uh, it's going to be for you to determine based on what you are growing and how long you're going to leave that plant in that bin before you harvest it. If it's lettuce and it's growing for a month and you want to use the nutrient solution that is in the bin, you do not need to change that water out according to Dr. Kratke's method. If you plan on leaving that plant in there for a longer duration and you wind up adding nutrient solution to the bin, there may come a time when you really want to change that solution out. If it starts getting old, something like that, then you may want to change it out for sure. You want to look at your roots, make sure they're clean and white looking, uh, and that indicates that they're healthy. If you see that there's a change in them and they start to darken, then you may want to change your nutrient solution out. Then again, you may want to do it sooner than that. The directions on the Maxi Grow do call for changing the hydroponic solution reservoir weekly, which is different than what Dr. Kratke suggests. So I cannot tell you the best way, the best time frame to change the nutrient solution in your bin. It's going to be for you to determine based on what you're growing and how long those plants are going to be in that bin. Well, I do hope that this helps you out. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below in the comments section. If I can help you, I certainly will. This is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Bye for now.